Hey everyone, Betsy here. Just wanted to give you a quick heads up that starting with this recording and going into the foreseeable future, we'll be reviewing together via video calls. It's same great content, but the audio may sound different. So apologies in advance. As always, thank you so much for listening and on with the show. In a world, in a world, in a world where tomorrow's blockbusters reign and yesterday's classics are forgotten, three women intend to remember. Hey everyone, welcome to Millennials at the Movie House, the podcast where three friends watch older movies and review them from our modern everyday perspectives. I'm Betsy. I'm Tracy. And I'm Serena. It and- still throws me that we changed it. I'm like, <laughs> that's not the script. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what is she saying? <laughs> and today we're talking about Ball of Fire, 1941, directed by Howard Hawks written by Charles Brackett, Billy Wilder, and Thomas Monroe, and starring Gary Cooper and Barbara Sandwick. Quick synopsis, Tracy, go. (laughs) You forgot. Okay. (laughs) As per usual. Totally Okay. We have a group of men, I think there's eight men, who are putting together an encyclopedia. Because before the internet, that's what people did, is they researched things to put into an encyclopedia. I think it's been like a 10 years, and they've got three more years left, and they're at the letter S. I I picked that all up. Good job. I was not paying attention that well. (laughs) The the youngest guy, and he is in charge of grammar. And he realizes that because he's been stuck behind a desk for the past 10 years that he doesn't know the latest slang. So he gets out, goes to see a show and he, I think he meets other people too. Like there was like a, a fighting match. Starts with the fighting, garbage man. Yeah. The garbage man and a fight at a bar and everything. And he recruits a singer at a nightclub. Who's the girl who's, who is um, the Barbara Stanwyck. Um, so basically hilarity ensues because he falls, he kind of falls in love with her, but she's engaged with a mobster and she needs to hide out from the cops. So she stays at this Institute with the guys and, you know, they fall in love, et cetera. (laughs) Good job. Thanks. That That was a good synopsis. Um, what did we think of it? I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, it was cute. It was cute. I mean, it wasn't the greatest thing ever, but... No. Did you say it was a rom-com? Yeah. Yeah. I felt that. <laughs> you felt that in your soul. I felt that in my soul. I, I really liked Gary Cooper. I yes. did, too. I thought he was adorable. This was our He's first introduction so to Gary Cooper. And, Tracy, you were saying that he was on a list for, like... Yeah, like, what was the list? It was, like, the top... Top... 50 Hollywood men or something like that. And he was like number 11 or something. But I think that, you know, in comparison to like Cary Grant or Jimmy Stewart, you don't hear the name Gary Cooper, the way the the other name, like you've heard of him, but I feel like I have vaguely. I looked at his list and I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't know any of these movies. So, Mm -hmm. but he was in a lot. He was. Yes. Uh, he's 11 on the list of the 25 greatest male stars of classic Hollywood cinema. Mm. That's classic what Hollywood in. cinema. Yep. I, I, I totally buy that. He's very, he's very striking. He was, he, by he the way, a, he's six, three, I guess six, five. I was pretty close. Yeah. What was I, the other movie, Betsy? Sorry to interrupt. What was that other movie that you said you just watched with both um, Stanwyck and uh, Cooper in it? Yep, I had just watched Meet John Doe with both of them in it. And then last week, I watched Christmas in Connecticut. That was Barbara Stanwyck. And it was a different male lead, but it still had the um, one of the professors, the funny professor. The, the, the professor, Megan Brock. Yes, him. Yeah. He was in Christmas in Connecticut, too. So when, so when he came on screen, I was like, yes. <laughs> like, I was so excited because he was so really funny. funny in Christmas in Connecticut. That's- professor Megan Brock, uh, SZ Gal. The call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He looks so familiar, so familiar from like his his like acting to his his body. I was like, what is he from? And he's nothing that I recognize him from. I don't know who he reminds me of. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. He does. He has a very familiar face. I know who you're talking about. He has glasses. I don't know. There's no basis for this, but I feel like he would be the type of actor who an animator at Disney would be like, let's let's base a char- this character yes. off of him. Like, that's it's what it's one of the actual seven Because dwarves. I just, I look, I just looked up Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, he has to be a voice of Winnie the Pooh or something. Like, yeah. he's somebody. Yeah, he feels like a caricature of, yes. of yeah. whatever he's doing in such an yep. adorable way. Yeah. So, let's jump in. <laughs> Top of the marquee, what was everyone's favorite part? He was my favorite part. Yes. So, I have, he just, his, he's the physiologist. And he was, like, there were, it was Gary Cooper and then seven other guys. Mm-hmm. And maybe three of the guys were had real characters to them and he was definitely one of the top two mm-hmm. um he was just he was funny he he had he was a big guy and he had this like it wasn't a bow tie it was like a loose cravat, cravat or something, or something, or yeah. something. Yeah. and he would like fluff it up and yeah. he did it a couple of times even in like like off screen not off screen but like not center of attention he would do that and i just right. thought he was so funny and he had great lines he did that he had two sex lines where i thought were hilarious because mm-hmm. he's he does he did the thing is like oh well maybe i should you know research more on that a little bit more and then um his interactions with miss bragg when oh yeah he was um accusing she was accusing people of eating all the jam. And one of the professors confessed that he was doing research on strawberries. See, they were up to S and (laughs) um, he got a hunkering for jam for strawberry jam. And so he ate it all. And so he's like, Oh, I'm doing sex. Is that I'm researching sex. Is that okay? And he goes, yeah, as long as you have better restraint than Mr. Um, Oddly. And it was, it was just so like, I don't, I thought it was so funny because that's something like we would say, but I wouldn't have thought in like mixed company that they yeah. would say to each other. And I thought that was so funny. They had, um, they all had good, uh, what is it? Camaraderie? Yeah, chemistry. Yes. Chemistry. They had good like yeah. te- a tet or whatever. Um, so he was my favorite part. I, I totally buy that. That is a great favorite part. Oh, one more thing of his when he, they knew that the woman who was like funding them was coming over they went, they went straight to um, pots and like put him together. He was the one brushing his hair and then he yes. put it in his own hair and like. Anyway, I, feel like was, I feel like that was the moment that you're like, this guy right here. Right, this right. Guy. He was just, anyway, okay. He's so he was like, part. he's like, I forget, we've mentioned it before in the past. There was a female in one of the movies that even when the camera wasn't on them, they were doing something funny. And -hmm. we had mentioned it recently and I can't remember who it is now, but that, that was definitely him. Like you said, fixing his coat. Like even when the focus is, he's not the main of the screen. He's still doing funny stuff. Background acting. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes. Good. Favorite part. Serena, what was your favorite part? Um, Okay. Number one, uh, Professor Potts dimples. I'm she did that she, every time he was on screen she was like dimples <laughs> dimples <laughs> so cute um the introduction of barbara stanwick of what's her sugar puss O'Shea. sugar puss oh um the drum boogie scene i really liked that i, I liked that and i loved her outfits in every scene her outfits were her also were Edith Head, and she was a very famous in, in in the golden age of Hollywood. She was like the end all be all of of dress designers for the leading ladies of the screen. So every time you're watching, or a lot of the times when you're watching an old movie and you're like, "Oh my god, that is a gorgeous outfit!" It's it's Edith Head. Oh yeah, you uh, mentioned Edith? her before. Yeah. So, also, I don't know about you guys, but I was Google imaging, and um, did you guys know that Barbara Stanwyck is a redhead? I did not know that. I, I wonder if that goes towards the, the title of the movie, Ball of Fire. I mean, I know they... Ex- well, that's what I... That's, I, that's exactly mm. what I was thinking, is that Ball of Fire, fire red hair, literally fire red hair. Yeah. Um, but we didn't... No one made a comment or a reference to her hair being red. No. The movie was black and white, so we didn't know... 
So, well, speaking of the fact that we didn't know her hair color, that actually goes towards one of my favorite parts. I have two favorite parts, but one of them was the fact that he loved her. He fell for her initially for her intelligence, which sounds like, okay, that's such a, that's such a thing, like normal, whatever. But it was to the point where he couldn't describe her. He didn't know what she looked like when the guys were asking about it. He, yeah. he only was interested in her mind. So it was just that, to, that level of, of truly falling for her, for her intelligence. I feel like it's something you never see in older Even movies. now. Yeah. Yeah. I was going right. to say current day. Yeah. Right. And, but it was, yeah. But the line was, um, someone asked if he was, if she was a blonde or brunette and he said, I didn't even notice. So. Oh yeah, that's right. I do remember that. Yeah. Hmm. My other favorite part, my primary favorite part was the deconstruction of corn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really loved that. It was such a sincere conversation about yes. what corny means. Yep. And you knew that it was going to come in later. You knew that he was going to be corny in some way. And I was yep. like, totally prepared for that because he was a, he was a corny guy. Yeah. Um, but it was just such a, such a sincere conversation amongst all parties. And that's part yeah. of like those scenes with the, with the people in the room, they mm-hmm. were so, they were invested in it. They were like, yeah, we're yeah. going to answer you sincerely and help yeah. you work through these words. I loved that. I love it. It is interesting because something like that is it sometimes especially a slang word or something trying to explain that to an older person the nuances of it are always so because it could mean several different things and Mm -hmm. how you use it and what you pair it with Mm -hmm. is very interesting so it seeing that being broken down into yeah right and understanding where it came from initially explaining slang is something that all younger people have to do for older people that's fine yeah but even nowadays we also have to explain memes and mm. it, trying to explain a meme sometimes is very difficult for to, oh. <laughs> and once you try to explain it, you're like, this is, this is not working. <laughs> <laughs> to a point where you're like, why is this a thing? Right, like, exactly. <laughs> you lose the meaning of it for right, yourself when yeah. you try to explain it and you're like, okay. Because <laughs> sometimes it comes down to, it's just funny. <laughs> right. I, I don't know why, it. it just is. It just is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all good favorite parts. We all had different favorite parts, guys. Yeah. You know me and my, I love the uh, the outfits. I mean, when the outfits are good, I notice. Yeah, and her first outfit was like, it was gorgeous. It was risque, it really was. but it was gorgeous. <laughs> all right. Wheel of questions, guys. Ooh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that made Tracy actually jump. <laughs> I'm ready. You're ready? I'm writing this quote down, sorry. Mm-hmm. Six degrees of separation. We are going from. Oh, we're go- we're we're going between Kirsten Dunst and Gary Cooper. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> okay, <laughs> easier than I thought. Yeah, yeah it's, actually, right, it's really not that hard. Yeah, Serena, go. Okay, so um, during the movie, I made a comment which I later changed my mind about Gary Cooper looking like Dominic West. I changed my mind because actually the Joe Lilac character looked mm-hmm. significantly more so like him, mm-hmm. but there was just a face he made and I'm like, Oh, he looks like that guy from the affair. Uh, anyways. So <laughs> going off of that, I have a Gary Cooper looked a bit like Dominic West from the mm-hmm. affair with Joshua Jackson. Mm-hmm. And he is from Dawson's Creek with Michelle Williams, who was in the movie Dick with Kirsten Dunn's. Nicely, Nicely done. done. Thank you. It was really hard the first time. <laughs> Tracy, go. Okay. I have a real one and a fun one. Do I'm going to do both. Do, do the, the fun, fun one. I'll do my fun one. And then you okay. do your real one. I'll do my real one. Okay. Gary Cooper in Ball of Fire was also in a movie called Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. Mm-hmm which has a remake called, called Mr. Deeds with Adam Sandler and Winona Ryder, who's in Little Women with Kirsten Dunst. Well done. Wow. Damn. 
Okay, my fun one is Mm -hmm. Kirsten Dunst was in an interview with a vampire. Mm -hmm. The first of the vampire movies was Dracula. Mm -hmm. Dracula starred Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi was in a bunch of movies with Lon Chaney Jr., who happened to be the Wolfman. Lon Chaney Jr. was in High Noon with Gary Cooper. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. But my real one, Gary Cooper was in Ball of Fire with Barbara Stanwyck, obviously. Barbara Stanwyck was in an 80s show called The Colbys which I had never heard of, um, with what? Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston was in Cats and Dogs. Do you remember that? With Tobey Maguire? Who was in- <laughs> no, with, Ma- with Miriam Margolis, who was in How to Lose Friends and Alienate People with Kirsten Dunst. No, okay. So well, yes. Tobey Maguire. Yes, that's true. No. Yeah, but you could have cut it shorter. So Kier- Gary Cooper was in Wreck of Mary Deary with Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston was in <gasps> Cats and Dogs with Tommy McGuire. Tommy McGuire was in Spider Man with Kirsten Dunst. I oh, I could have cut out Barbara Stanwyck. Yep. Nice. nice. And the last one. Who did you? Char- oh, I picked with Tommy McGuire. You, you took Tommy McGuire. I got it. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Cats and Cats and Dogs was integral. The dogs was like Cats and Dogs. Cats and Dogs was important. <laughs> Well, because it was one of those modern pin. movies that Char- Charlton had, well, Charlton Heston, he was the linchpin. So that's the other thing yeah. about this fun game, because it's causing me to learn new people. I mean, it's, it's bringing me on a search. And along the way, along the way of my adventure, I'm finding, oh, who are this, who's this person? And then I like, you know, I tra- trail off, you know, 30 people later. Yeah, that's the IMDb game. Mm. Yeah, is that what that is? Is the IMDb game? You fall down the rabbit hole of IMDb where you look up a filmography and then you end up on a movie and you look up on that person and blah, 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 blah. While we're on this question still, I just want to put a shout out to Professor Quintana, who he was one of the more minor professors. He was the one with the, not the, the mustache and the eyebrows, but the other mustache guy who pulled the rug under the, the bad guy at the end. Um, he was Professor Overbeck in the original Batman movie, who was the original Red Hood. So that's my Batman connection. Tracy's Batman connection. I was going to say, you have one job, and it is to make the Batman connection. (laughs) Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There it is. How has this movie influenced or been influenced by other movies? So this was clearly, there are clearly inspirations from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Like, I think it was purposeful. Yes. Oh, they, my God. They, oh, my God. I was just thinking that. That's so funny. I think they referenced it. Or I think um, uh, Babyface, what's her name? Snuggleface? Sugarpuss? <laughs> Sugarpuss. <laughs> this is like the time that Tracy couldn't get what's-his-name right. Oh, my God. Northbridge or North... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Northbrook. Northbrook. <laughs> baby face. You're, you're going to be baby face and you're going to be snuggle puss. What did they call it? Snuggle face. Snuggle, snuggle face. face. Um, sugar puss. What was it? Sugar puss? Yeah. Sugar puss. Okay. I think she even said, you know, there's happy sleepy doc or something like that. Um, which brings me to, I wrote down Sydney White. Oh my movie. God, Sydney! W- <laughs> Listen, that's an underappreciated movie. It is, is all I'm saying. A lot of her movies are yeah. there, but anyway, yeah. Um, but I and I underneath that I put genre because I feel like there is a several movies, and I think it is a play off of the the Seven Dwarfs, where an outsider comes in and influences a group of people, and mm-hmm. and then there's a romance between one of them, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like the whole group usually you know, cheers behind this, this person that, or, or she helps them get out of a rut or, yep. uh, you know. I got you. I got you. And Snow White just is the, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, the, the movie that, that really felt like a similar plot line of all of them was, uh, for me, was Sister Act. Where okay, yes, because she was hiding from the mob. She was hiding from the mob, ended up in this, like, misfit oh, yeah. group, or, like, a group where she stuck out, like, a sore thumb, yep. but they all kind of took to her, and then they came, became protective, and blah, blah, blah. So, oh, my God. Yeah, and she, Dude, and she kind exactly. of pulled them out of a rut. Yeah, that, yeah. that is definitely some type of genre. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a perfect example, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, oh, other other movies that we referenced, Tracy, you called out Che Che Bang Bang. Yes. Yep. I oh, just yeah. the, any mm-hmm. anytime there's a gaggle of old men, <laughs> a gaggle of old men. <laughs> yeah, it's the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Inventors. Yeah, this kind of goes into the next question, but I feel like it like if it was made today, I don't, well, maybe it still would have been old men. They wouldn't make this today because there's no such thing as an encyclopedia anymore. But it it was just another example of how they would always cast older men and younger women. Yeah, mm. I was going to mention that. He looked yeah. good for 40. Yeah, it would have been it would have been more varied. But there's something, I mean, again, I think it goes back to referencing Snow White, where it was, they were all, they were like, all like... safe. Yeah. Um, the only other movie I could think of was The Time Machine. Do you guys remember The Time Machine with Guy Pierce from like the early 2000s? And the only reason I say it is because he was, he was the epitome of that absent-minded professor vibe, which is mm-hmm. what all these guys were. But it was yep. really the, the set of their house, the set design of that grand room really mm-hmm. made me think of the time machine. But speaking of that, I loved their setup in the grand room. Yes. Where they all had oh, I love that. At they like all had levels. Yep. The books were just yep. everywhere. I loved that. I did. That was really nice. That stood out to me, actually. I was like, oh, it's a cozy, like, cool setup. It's like a library. Yeah. All right, did anybody have anything else? Any other movies? Um, mm-hmm. I had I had a few that, well, a few things, not necessarily just movies, but um, one of the professors, I don't remember who, maybe he was a short, funny guy that we were talking about earlier, but um, he, somebody gave, one of them gave me a Wizard of Oz vibe, like the guy behind the curtain, mm-hmm. the man behind the yes. curtain. Um, and you know, Wizard of Oz, obviously. And then, um, I also right off the bat, a, maybe because it's a time frame. I actually forget when this movie was came out, but in the fact that it's like black and white and, um, like the stature of Gary Cooper, I just right off the bat got that, that vibe of it's a wonderful life. That guy, remember I said that too. I was like, Hey, mm-hmm. is that the same guy? Um, it's not. <laughs> Well, I, I, w- I thought it was funny you said that because one of the professors is in Wonderful Life. Um, it's a Wonderful Life, which I mean, I like they're they're actors, like you know, they're yeah. Gonna there's gonna be a mixture. There's but... a lot of recycling. Yeah. In the forties. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just like got that vibe, and you know, something about Professor Potts' character, I don't know, made me think of the main character from It's a Wonderful Life. Like a little bit, just kind of like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Very endearing, very, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Um, I got singing in the rain vibes because oh, yeah. she would say this. She goes, What's the big idea? She you know, she say it like that. that a lot. But because she kept saying it, and every time she would say it, I would do uh, Lena. Yeah. From singing in the rain. What's the big idea? The oh big my god! Dumb or something? It's <laughs> so funny. I forgot about that. <laughs> What's the big idea? What's the big idea? Oh, it might be time for a rewatch of Singing in the Rain. <laughs> I know. I think we should. Um, the other thing, um, yeah, Seven Dwarves to repeat that, and then. The other thing that I kept thinking about during the entire like premise was that the movie was basically 1941's version of Urban Dictionary. Yes, creation yes, of. yes, yes. If so, if it was made today, it would be somebody from like Merriam Webster. The group, the guys would be working at Merriam Webster, and then then Urban Dictionary would come in. Like yes, that's, yep. yes, yep, exactly. To the point where we, where I looked up one of the slang terms on Urban Dictionary, and it did give the appropriate answer. Uh, okay, ladies, please remove your hats and silence your cell phones. How does this film hold up? Um, I thought it aged well because it yeah. was, it was obviously placed in the '40s, but it was talking about slang and the and how things change. And I think yeah. that's very like we have already talked about it. How it's very pertinent today. How if you miss out on a word. It, especially with the internet right now, it, it's ever changing slang of what things mean. Right. And you're always right. trying to like catch people up. Even, even my, I, I we, we're now at the age ladies that we if we miss something on the internet, we don't quite know how to fit it in. Um, 
and hence, thank God for Urban Dictionary, because you're like, is that funny or offensive? Let me go make right. sure right. if it, you know, if right. I'm like, if I quote it again, am I missing a nuance that I shouldn't? Right, um, exactly, exactly. Well, and it was interesting in the movie there, like they were explaining a slang with another slang. So it still wasn't helping. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was, yeah, I've, I've done that. I've, I've that had was, that done to me and I've done that. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was something um, not to like cut you off, Trey, but that just to say, cause you brought it up um, that part, the funny phrases and the phonetically like, funny descriptive words like that was one of my favorite parts of the movie too like that made it lively I of course didn't write them down but at the same time it made it made the movie hold up and not hold up like right it 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 was very because it was very 1941 but at the same time you're like yeah this was a moment in time in 1941 this is what they were saying in 1941 to an extreme I I think because they they did it purposely but right but ironically the sum of the it, slang didn't hold up because right we, we've lost those words some of the words right. went i want to bring it back yeah well, i want to bring it all back i think you're right it, it it is a period of time but it made it relatable because you you could right. pick up a word right now that you're like oh yeah you know five years ago we would use this all the time and now we don't even right it was the bomb which we still use i mean <laughs> oh yeah no we're we're totally <laughs> hip <laughs> And I think that's interesting because I think, uh, I mean, we, we call ourselves millennials. We are millennials, but I think slang helps define a generation. Mm-hmm. I was actually surprised mm-hmm. at some of the stuff that the, some of the slang that they were using, the fact that it was 1941, I was like, oh, I could hear that being like said in the eighties. Right. So a lot of the words hung around the, the words that they were using. Like that corny. Were considered, yeah, right. Corny. It was the exact same meaning. Yeah, and in yep. fact, I appre- like I had never heard it defined so well. <laughs> right, right. Corny is one of those words where you're like, how do you actually describe right. that? <laughs> Root word, corn. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, do we want to jump into boom? We fixed it because yes. this, I have, I have, I have a comment about Sugar Puss, yes. which I so as I was saying, I've watched three Barbara Stanwyck movies in the past two weeks, and all three of the characters, but exemplified with with sugar post she is she does not play those fierce females that we've become acclimated no, to in no. the older movies like we I, I know that we were talking about it in the in the um finale of season one where we happened upon all these movies with these really strong female characters she is not a strong female character she's not well developed she's there as a prop for the mm-hmm. men and yes yeah, she was like snarky and like you know refused to do things that she didn't want to do but it it was she was, she was just picking between two men that was it like yeah i even i think her snarky comments made me feel like she did have decent character maybe not like full development because it was just like love interest stuff. But I put in quotes like women in power because I felt like for the forties, she really was like wicked spunky compared to like other women. Um, And also it made me kind of feel like we were watching a mob movie. Well, so I feel like that held up that part of it. The other thing I was going to say was if we're talking about it being a snow and seven doors movie, it was then from the perspective of the prince. We didn't even get yes. it from the perspective of Snow White. No. So I feel like that just drives home the fact that she she wasn't the main character. No. I, I appreciated the fact I thought she was untraditionally pretty. Mm, yes. Yes. I yeah. didn't, she wasn't yeah. like that bombshell. She had like an interesting face, which made her, I think, stand out. But, I think it was yeah, the shape I of her eyes too. Her eyes. Her nose. I thought it was it was bit, not bad, but just not stereotypical. Mm-hmm. Um, so she I did a, like that. A unique but she beauty. didn't. I and I didn't like her character. I just didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Why um, did I like her character? It's because she was sassy. She was sassy. What was any anyone else? I have a. I fixed it. Yes, I think this is my issue with a lot of old movies: is there wasn't enough wooing. So she, like, even to the point where I thought she should have been turning to, um, what's his name? Potts. 
there was a point when I think he, even after he proposed to her, even though if she wasn't ready to marry, she still wasn't smitten with him at, at all. So when the phone rang, she ran down and took the phone call from Joe Lilac, the gangster. And oh, she yeah. was still like, please get me out of here. I can't mm-hmm. wait to get out of here. Yeah. And I didn't like that it, scene. It was, I felt like she was supposed to already be like, Oh, this is my chance to get away from this guy. And yeah. I thought her switch of no, you're a bad guy came on too soon. There was no, like, if she was trying to get away from like the two gangster guys, the two like buddies or whatever, if she was actively trying to get away from them because she wanted out, then I would have bought it a little bit more. But I thought the switch was so abrupt. Yeah. And I, yeah. after one kiss, he was ready to marry her, which I'm like, all right, fine. It's way back in the day. I'll forgive that. But it was still... You're right. The moment where she should have reciprocated was too late in the movie. And yes. it was an afterthought that Joe Lilac was a bad guy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. All of that. So that's what I would have fixed. But I put more kissing. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. More, more yum yum, you mean? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was so cute um, when she went up on the books to kiss him. That was adorable. It was. They, and, did, they did have good chemistry. I will say that. And then the other thing I was going to say for Boom My Fix is, I'm sorry, like, I would have loved it if it was in color, but mm, yeah, fine. Yeah. We, you might be able to find, like, a remastered, in, you know, colorized version, maybe. Yeah, the color. Maybe. Oh. Tracy, you disagreed that they had good chemistry? I, yeah. I, I think it, it came down to she wasn't reciprocating his until the very end. Yeah. Fair. And even then, I because of that, I just I was pulled out of it. So even if they perhaps had chemistry, I just was like, no, that's fake. Well, you know what it was also is he, she was playing him for so long, and he was yeah. such a disarming character that that you're prote- like you become protective of his character to yeah. against her against her because yeah. you know that she's yeah. playing him, and you're like you don't have sympathy for her. You you want you want pops to be protected against her so yes it didn't um, after that so, scene when she took the phone call with joe lilac um i was like what the hell yeah i it guess kinda, it kind of like, reminds me it. of movies too like 10 things i hate about you where you have that bet where i'm entering into this under false pretenses but then i have that switch because i fall in love with you and that switch wasn't convincing like mm-hmm. other i will say because at first i was like oh he's just you know falling in love with the first woman he's seen you do have the the um the money. What was the woman's name? Yeah, I can't the, remember her name. The uh, institute who's paying for all this, who was clearly smitten with him, mm-hmm. um, and he knew it because all the guys knew it, and so he wasn't. I don't know as naive, I guess as as he came he did have self- choices, oh. I guess. Yeah, yeah. But goes back to the gangster being a bad guy. Uh, Joe Lilac. I thought he was a good character. He was he was interesting. He yeah, he was a bad guy, but if it had been from his perspective, we would have been rooting for him because yes. he was that good bad guy. Cause he was charming and whatever. Um, and I think even I, I, in the middle of the movie, I said, I want pots to fall in love with the money, the girl and for what's her face to go back to Joe Lilac. Cause I thought they had chemistry. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, that's right. And I go, and I know that's not going to happen. They were on the same level. Like at no point was, was O'Shea like duped by Joe Lilac. Right. She no, was she fully knew aware of what was yeah, happening the whole absolutely. time. So she was on his level. It made sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good job. Boom. We fixed it guys. All right. Notes round up anything. <laughs> Maybe my research on sex is a little out- outdated too. That was a good one. Yep. What's the big idea? <laughs> What's um, the big, big idea? idea? <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the yum yum scene where she was like, oh, we need to do, she was explaining the slang of yum yum and she kissed him and she kissed him once, said yum, kissed him a second and this is the second yum. And the throwback later is he goes, will you yummy once more? So I yes. thought that was. Um, it was cute. Yeah. But I think my favorite quote was Miss Bragg. She, we need to give Miss Bragg a little shout out. She yep. was really good. Um, she was the housekeeper to all of these men. Um, and she kept up with them. She was, she was, you know, witty, smart. And she went to Potts because uh, 
uh, O'Shea was kind of was dancing with the guys and distracting them and kind of causing them to, you know, go off the rails. And she goes to Potts and, and goes, it's either her or me. You need to get rid of her because she's the kind of woman that makes whole civilizations topple. Mm-hmm. I thought oh, yeah. that was a great, a great descriptor. And it was still in like context of like history and what they were researching. Cause I think, I think Cleopatra is, is that, and who's the, the Helen of Helen Troy. Of Troy. Yeah, that, yeah. That was what like made me that, think of that it. That yeah. woman who really just, just one woman wrecks an entire civilization because they're that um, alluring to the... Yeah, that was that was a good line. That was possibly the best line. What was it ever. makes it uh, entire civilizations what? Topple. Topple. All right, any other notes? Oh, I'm... the Amici. The Amici is the telephone. <laughs> that was the one that I had to use Urban Dictionary. Yeah. Which I think was so... Uh, meta yeah it was so meta it was so relevant because it was what we had to look up and then the meaning of it was a telephone because it was named after the actor who played the inventor in a movie so they were playing the same game we were playing and that's like you know so okay the martini shop would you recommend it i say no fair i say yes do you want to explain your no what do you say first, Bets? I say a soft yes. A soft yes, okay. Yeah. I say no because I enjoyed it. It was fun. I didn't fall asleep. I, it had some good lines, but there was nothing that was particularly memorable or, or laugh out loud, or it didn't have that spark for me that I could honestly tell someone to go out of their way to watch it, which that's I know fair. that's what we do for this podcast, but... Um, no, that's fair. Like I said, and it I, was a good movie. I, you wouldn't waste your time, but um, I don't remember which movie it was for. But we we bas- we said no to whatever the movie was, and was like, "This isn't the best performance of anybody involved. If you're gonna watch a movie, watch something that is more yeah. them." And was I, it the I, Marilyn movie? It might have been Marilyn. Yeah. Um, so I, I get that. I get that. But I I mean. If if you find this on TCM one day and there's nothing else to do, yeah, watch it. It's you know, yeah, I, it was funny. It had some good lines. It was yeah, a coherent storyline. It wasn't hard to follow. It was yeah, it was a little long. It was an. Hour I liked it. I think yeah. I liked it. I think um, for me, any rom com is an easy watch uh, as long as it's like decent. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I just I except for the scene when she took the lilac call from there yeah you're right when you brought that up trey it kind of like made me think like at that point it kind of did take you out of it but up until that point i was like this is the cutest movie and then i was like okay what's gonna happen i i just want to like fast forward to the last part now yeah because i was like okay obviously she's not gonna stay with the mobster you know but the the kissing scene was adorable. The books, the whatever, all the I love the funny phrases and like all the phonetically like funny things that were going on, all the words and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I think that it was, was it like it was good those, wordplay. Yeah, th- for those reasons, I would say yes. Like I've recommended movies that I've like liked less. <laughs> That's true. True. All right. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you hear, you can find more great episodes over on our website, www.millennialsatthemoviehouse.com, or wherever you find your podcasts. Curious about updates, extras from our episodes, or want to add to your two cents about a reviewed movie? We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle for both is at the movie Millies. Check us out and make sure to follow us. So until next time, we're millennials. And we'll see you at the movie house.